Hello everyone, it's Benny, and in this video we're going to start working on our rendering mechanics. Now, before I get started, I just want to really quickly go over something I changed in the input class. First off, I did change around the algorithm a little bit. Not that it matters, but the point is, if you want to copy this from GitHub or what, whatever, you will have to do input.update after game.input. So just so you know, I did change this around a bit. It's not going to be a big deal, but if you want it, it's there. The other thing you probably do want is, I went ahead and added constants for just about every key code you could reasonably imagine. Most of them came from Lightweight Java Game Library's keyboard class. I did make a few changes of my own, like I added a constant for left alt, mapped that to left menu so you don't have to memorize that. And, yeah. So, that's all on GitHub if you want it. And, with that all out of the way, let's go ahead and get started. So... The first thing I want to do in our rendering mechanics is create a new class called RenderUtil. And what this class is going to do is it's going to have a whole bunch of static methods for fairly basic graphics operations, but things that will be useful. Essentially, things that are going to be useful enough that you want to do them at some degree of frequency, but not so overly complex that it justifies importing a whole bunch of OpenGL code for, to do it. Things like, say, for example, our first method. Public static void clear screen. And, predictably, this method is just going to completely erase everything that we've drawn on the screen so far. If there's anything that's still there. So, first off, I need to import OpenGL. So, import static org.lwjgl.opengl.gl11.star And this method's only going to do one thing right now. Well, technically two things. It's going to do gl clear. It's going to take in some integer. So it's, what I'm going to pass in is gl color buffer bit. That'll tell it to clear all the colors from the screen. But I'm also going to do a bitwise OR with the GL depth buffer bit. And that will tell it to clear the depth buffer, which I'm going to go over when I very shortly, don't worry. I'm also going to leave a little note here. To do stencil buffer, because I'm not using it right now, but eventually I may end up using some stencil operations, and it'll be important to have that there. But right now I'm just going to leave it as it is. Next method I want in here is public static void init graphics. And all this method's going to do is initialize OpenGL, or return it to the base state that our, I want the game engine to be in, if that makes any sense. So not, it's not going to assume OpenGL is, is in the default state. It's just going to set everything to the way I want the engine to default to. So first off, I'm going to say GL clear color. And I'm going to set the color we want to clear to, 0.0f, 0.0f, and 0.0f. So, 0, 0, 0, complete blackness. So, this means whenever we clear the screen with this command right here, it will set all the pixels to this color. Pretty straightforward. Next thing I want is I want face color. So, gl enable gl cull face. Now, here's how face culling works. Whenever I draw something in OpenGL, by default, it's actually drawing two things. First off, it's drawing one of them facing you, and it's drawing another instance of it that's facing away from you. And, you know, that's nice in some instances, but if I'm just drawing, like, some square, what's the point of drawing that second square that's never going to be seen by the camera? That happens a lot, so it's better to just call, get rid of all those extra face drawings if I actually do want that second face, just add that in manually. Well, manually, I don't know how you get that pronunciation, but whatever, not the point. So yeah, I'm going to enable it. I'm going to need to set some parameters so it knows which face is front and which one's back. So first off, I'm going to say GL front face, GL CW for clockwise. That tells it, OpenGL that every face I draw in clockwise order, that's going to be the front face. And that's going to be important for the next face, which is GL call face, Geo back. I want to get rid of the back face. And that's telling it which of those two faces not to draw. In this case, the back one. So there you go. If you ever get, if you draw something in our code and it's not showing up, try reversing the vertex order because 
it may just being called. It may just be being called. <laughs> so yeah. Now, next up, GL enable GL depth buffer. Or GL depth test, not depth buffer. I'm <laughs> I don't know how I got that, but whatever. So, GL depth test. This is important for when I'm drawing more than one thing. What this means is every time I draw a pixel, OpenGL is going to take it's going to keep track of where that pixel is in sort of 3D space. It's going to keep track of the Z component. It's going to keep some number for how far away it is from the camera. That way, whenever I draw a new shape, it can sort of test that and say, hey, the previous pixel that's already here is 10 units away from the camera, but this one's only 5 units away from the camera. I should probably draw this new pixel on top of the other one. And that way, when that way it can tell which order things should be drawn in, and I don't have to worry about some complex draw order algorithm to deter so things don't end up being drawn on top of each other. Finally, I'm going to leave a sort of note here to do depth clamp for later. Later on I'm going to want to do depth clamping. I don't want to do that right now, just leaving a note for later. But the final thing I actually do want to do is something that is not in OpenGL 1.1. Going to have import static or dot lwjgl dot opengl dot gl three zero. It's going to be an opengl three point oh feature. Gl enable G gl frame buffer srgb. If I can type it, there you go. The reason I'm enabling this is to essentially get free gamma correction. On a slightly more technical level. All the colors in that you want to send to OpenGL, you want to send them in an exponential order rather than linear. So if I want a color that's perfect gray, so everything is 0.5, I wouldn't actually want to send a 0.5 value to my screen to display because the screen does a gamma correction thing, and therefore that would end up being much darker, closer to being something around, oh, I forget the exact algorithm, but it would be a lot darker than you'd expect. So I'd actually want to send all the colors with an exponential increase. I want to send a color closer to 0 0.7 or 0 0.8 if I actually wanted a true perfect gray shade to show up. And in order to sort of get that for free, I'm just going to enable frame buffer sRGB. That means all the colors I'm sending are already going to be, well, it's going to do that exponential correction essentially for us when we do our texture loader. So that way we don't even need to worry about this whole exponential thing and things appear much darker than they actually are. It's going to do that exponential correction for us. That's the whole point of this. If you want to know more about it, because I didn't exactly go too in-depth on that, look up sRGB or gamma correction. It's There's a lot of information about it, but I don't want to go too deep into it because essentially this is solving it for us for free. And yeah, so that's all I want to do in Render Util for now. I'm going to end up adding a few more methods later on, but these are going to last us for a decent while. These are the main methods I want in here. Let's go ahead and put those methods to use, though. In our render method, our main component, let's do render clear screen. And this should do absolutely nothing right now, but that's okay. Well, it's doing something, but it shouldn't create a visual difference. And in our initialization, let's do render util dot init graphics. So right now, it should look exactly the same. Okay, good. It's still giving us a huge dark void of blackness. But let's, let's go and render util just to change things up a bit. Let's set our screen clear color to purple. Now, if I run it, it should give us this very bright, obnoxious purple pink color, some shade of magenta. Of course, I don't want that, but just to show you that this actually is doing something now, there you go. So that's all I really want to do in this video, just get very basic OpenGL setup. This this is the whole base setup. We won't have to do this ever again, and it's going to make it a whole bunch easier in the next video, where we actually start drawing things that are useful. So, thank you, hope you enjoyed, and see you next time.